Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crystal Cards. I am Brian Mead, and uh, today we got John uh, that's going to be talking with us about a, his Gallus the Star Beast deck, which I gotta say is pretty cool. Um, but first, I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, we are just coming off the heels of the Epic Dawn Battle Pack release for this episode, and um, so one, I want to talk a little bit about what you're going to be starting to see at tournaments a lot more. Uh, not that you haven't been seeing these cards at tournaments, but these cards were primarily played by like top tier players who had really put m a lot of money into their decks. And now, with the uh, release of these cards, uh, again, we're going to start seeing them a lot more in uh, decks across the board. So the first card, just to be aware of, is Fiendish Chain. This is an excellent counter trap, or excuse me, a uh, continuous trap card. It negates the uh, effect of a monster which is just awesome for stopping things like Insectors and um, also can stop attacks so if this is on a monster it can't attack that can be really really helpful to just stop that initial effect that your opponent is going for so if they're playing Dino Rabbit as soon as they summon the rabbit poof you can Phoenix Chain it and they won't be able to remove it uh, if they summon that Dragonfly BAM they uh, won't be able to do their thing with it um, I actually used it a lot yesterday at my local. Uh, I ended up hitting Card Trooper a lot with it. Um, the next one, just to everyone to be aware of, is Tour Guide from the Underworld. Now this one's still uh, a little on the pricey. It's probably the most wanted card out of the Epic Dawn Battle Pack. But this little guy, if you don't know what he does, when you normal summon him, you get to special summon a level 3 Fiend from your deck. Uh, onto the field and it can't be used for synchro material but that doesn't matter because since tour guide is level three uh, it makes you it makes for a quick first turn uh, exceed summons uh, for rank threes which is just uh, really easy to do and with everybody playing Sang and Sang is a uh, main deck staple tour guide a lot of people will just go for that Sang in first turn uh, but that doesn't mean you couldn't combo it with this little girl Tour bus from the underworld. This is what I usually like to go uh, grab with my tour guide. By overlaying these two, when I I can send the tour guide first as the first material that I let go of, and then when I let go of the tour bus, the tour bus's effect will activate in the graveyard and let me send that tour guide or whatever other monster that I might want to use back. But if it's a first turn thing, I usually will send my tour guide back because then I can do it again with a Sangin or another tour guide later. Um, you're also going to see a, uh, some more of these. You can see the the Forbidden Lance, which I actually don't have a common copy of, so I didn't want to put it on the video, but I do have a common theme, uh, Chalice. And this is actually just a wonderful uh, counter, counter to the effects as well, just like the Phoenix Chain is. Uh, if you don't have the money to run the effect, Veilers, this isn't a bad uh, a bad option to go as well. You can set it. It is more susceptible to the Mystical Space Typhoons because, of course, they're going to try an MST before they normal summon, so they don't want to get bottomless. But um, if, you, if you do get the chance to hit it, uh, it can negate on your opponent's turn because it's a quick play spell card, or you can activate it from your hand on your turn. So that's really nice. But uh, enough of that, enough talking about these new cards. Let's get over to this Gallus deck. So uh, here we go. All right, so we are here with John, and John is the best damn thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. If you haven't caught on to his YouTube show, make sure to check out the link and subscribe to him. He has awesome decks all the time. I love watching him. John, uh, what do you got for us today? I'm actually bringing you guys my Light Ray Sworn deck, and it's also got the Gallus Engine thrown in for a little extra speed. So, to start things, it's 38 monsters and 2 spells. I know, that seems like a lot. To start things off, I'll, sh I'll show you my Gallus engine. Obviously, I'm running three Gallus Star Beast. Why? Because this thing is freaking good. You reveal it, you mill one, and you burn them. Simple as that. To abuse the Gallus even more, I'm running three Burn Man. This thing is fun to use with, with Gallus because you can bounce Gallus and just resummon it for even more burn damage and then either go into a level 6 synchro or a rank 3 exceed. Now for the light one side of it, I've got two Rikos. 
I run these for mainly is the Dino Rabbit patch up because this thing can get around their log ears pretty damn easily. Set it, they attack into it, you pop it. Simple as that. It's light sworn, so I gotta run two Lumina. It's stable in light sworn decks. Also running two Lilas for those heavy back row decks. Now here's a little fun thing. I'm running double wolf. And the sad thing about this is when I mill it off of Oak Gallus. Cause now I'm not so then I'm not just getting the Gallus burn, I'm getting a twenty one hundred beat stick. I'm only running one Aaron. I don't it's okay, but I don't need it that often. I'm running two Janes. Mainly because I'm also running a Gonna be running a light ray Gearfried in this deck. And Gearfried needs warriors. And on top of that, I'm running one Garoth. And the big boss monsters for the deck. First off, we got three JD. Yes, <laughs> the big badass himself. That's just double trouble right there. Yes. Pay a thousand, nuke everything but him, and then swing for three thousand. Not to mention, if you milled him off the Gallus, it's just bonus points. Yeah, it's like sixteen hundred damage. Now for the light ray aspect of it, I'm running one Diodis, mainly for those Gear Town or Malefic or whatever you want to call them builds, the ones that run field spells. I'm also running this for against uh, Dragoonities, which I've seen a Big uprising right now, thanks to uh, Tom. Um, just you can pop their field spell and then two of their cards as well. One Diablos, because he's a 2800 attack beat stick that you just need five different lights in your grave to get out. One Lightweight Sorcerer. I'm mainly attacking this guy because. I can be removing a lot of stuff from my Chaos Sorcerers or my BLS when I get it. This guy would come out pretty so easily. To speed up the summoning of Sorcerer, I'm running one Light Raid Greffer. Which is pretty nice. You can banish one light, pop him on the field, and then still go about your normal summon. Now, going into the hand traps. I am running three Battle Vader. And this is mainly to stop those damn exceed spamming decks that just go all out and stops the heretics. And it's just downright good this format. Of course you gotta run the one gores. It's pretty much staple nowadays. There's a lot of lights in the deck, so gotta run honest. I'm also running Double Veiler with the third one side in. And I'm also meaning two DD Crows for the dark aspect. Then going into the Chaos aspect of it, two Chaos Sorcerers. Um, one of these will actually be a BLS when I get it, so yeah. <laughs> But for now, it's Chaos Sorcerer, so it allows me to go into rank 6 exceeds if I have one. Okay. One card trooper to increase the milling a little bit more. And plus, when it dies, I get to draw a card. One Sangin. Pretty much staple nowadays. So that's it for the monsters. Now for the spells. I'm trying this card out right now. It's called Constantly a Bell. Since most of my monsters are light, this allows their effects to not be negated at all. And then, of course, you run the one Monster Reborn. Because it's just broken. <laughs> okay, going into the extra deck. I'm running one Cataster. Because it's Cataster, it's broken. It pops anything that's not dark. Insta-kills, insta-kills. <laughs> One magical android. Mainly for those times when I'm going in, when I'm down to t 
time in the tournament, and I just need to gain life points to beat them out and stall. One, Flame Vale Uriquiza, personal favorite of mine. It's a level 6, so it's so Gallus plus Birdman, and it does piercing damage and gains attack each time it does damage. One guy and knight to get over those Lagias, those Dokas, those Stardust, pretty much anything with 2500 or less. Um, one Black Rose. It's Black Rose, it nukes the field, what more do you say? <laughs> one Stardust, it protects your field, what more do you say? <laughs> right now I'm running one Mistworm. Um, I, might, I won't be having this thing much longer, but pretty much any level 3 plus Gallus plus mm. Burnman and bounce three cards. Part of it, the best damn exceed in the game right now, or at least one of the best, number 17 Leviathan Dragon. It is my go-to rank 3 in this deck. And then we also got number 30 as a golem of destruction. The card that, if you guys are from my channel, was just recently reviewed in Best Damn Card of the Week. A few more texts in the extra deck. I'm writing one Missouri the String Digit, mainly because it can, when it's attacking another, an opponent's monster, it becomes a 3,000 attack beat deck with its effect. One Mellow Melody, this combined with Majorum, allows that 300 attack beat stick to attack twice. So, what's better than that? Um, I'm t mainly running this right, 10 tempo right now for the pure fact that I don't have a Brio. <laughs> so, this is my replacement for Bryonic. It's still pretty good, I mean, it stops Logia. Um, and then the th the rank fours that I run, two number thirty nine Utopias. It is too damn good not to ignore. It's twenty five hundred attack negates attacks. What's better than that? And of course, the number C thirty nine Utopia Ray. And with lights all over your deck, I assume the Utopia Ray pops out uh, a lot more often than he does in other decks. Yes, he does. It's actually quite surprising because they never see it coming when I have three monsters on the field. Now, John, I do want to ask you a couple questions about this deck real quick. Uh, my All first right. one is, um, I, you know, I actually have seen this deck before. Uh, that I saw your last profile of this deck was one of the reasons that I, I thought it was so cool. I wanted to see it on here. Um, I don't see Trigogia in the deck anymore. Um, I was actually taking that, putting that in. For the light rays that I didn't have yet. Ah, okay, okay. And um, same with the third failure. And the other card that I saw you use before, and you know, if if you don't have the cards, uh, all the cards to build this deck, and you want to try it, uh, I know you were using um, uh, the Exodi Exodios, the ultimate forbidden one before, which was I just want to say I thought it was so cool to see that as tech for the Gallus. Um, oh well, yeah, because. With most of your cards being monsters, you can drop that and pretty much refresh your whole deck. So those those are just a couple of cool options that I know I know you've used before. Even if they're not in the deck now, they're still viable options. Right, and I'm actually still citing them. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, John. We're we're running out of time, so I gotta let you go. But uh, that's fine. I look, I look forward to uh, uh, get having you again as a guest on the show here. No problem. All right. All right. So that was uh, John's Gallus deck. Obviously, it's a very different deck, being full of monsters and only two spell cards, no trap cards at all. Um, I do want to emphasize once again that that deck, um, his his uh, older build did run uh, Trigoji in it, which I actually really like and. Uh, have had a lot. I've actually built this deck, and I've had some success with it myself. So uh, I just want to encourage everyone to go ahead and give it a try. Next week, make sure to tune in because we're going to be taking a look at the Nordic deck. Finally, I talked about it in the first uh, first episode, and we're finally 
going to get to Thor, Loki, and Odin. So uh, all three gods, one deck, which isn't the popular way to go, but it's the fun way to go, which is what I'm more about. Until next time, see everybody later.